Afternoon, Connie. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you feeling today? Feeling great. Feeling great. Love thank it. You for, listen, thank you for having me. It is such an honor and a privilege. I appreciate it tremendously. Oh, thank you. That makes me happy. I'm glad. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with this conversation. Okay. Super casual, but lots yeah, of Yeah, yeah, we're casual. It's, it's super casual. I'm, I'm casual. I'm just chilling. You just, I'm, just, I'm just chilling too. All right, so for those of you guys that don't know, I am Connie S. Falls and the S is for Systems. I help creative entrepreneurs create the foundation to their business so they can grow, scale, and sometimes sell their businesses as well. And today on Business and BS, because sometimes BS stands for business strategies and sometimes BS stands for the regular BS that comes along with this entrepreneur journey. We have an amazing guest with us today, Mr. Sean Crenshaw of Ovation. Sean, how you doing? Doing great, Connie. Good, good, good. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about the business, and then we're going to start going from the beginning. But give people an introduction to who you are and what you're doing. Yes, yes. So uh, my name is Sean Crenshaw. I am the founder and CEO of uh, Ovation for Men Fragrance. Um, Ovation for Men is independent designer fragrance brand. The concept of, of Ovation is a brand that celebrates the style, creativity, and showmanship of men of color. And, um, you know, I've been a fragrance collector, a fragrance connoisseur since my dad bought me my first bottle of Pierre Cardon back in the early 80s. And, on, uh, and so I've always had this dream of creating my own fragrance brand. And, um, you know, and, and I just remember just the great memories that I had of fragrance when I was coming up, you know. And, um, and so, I, 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 you know, I just wanted to create, use that, the, the platform of fragrance to really um, just celebrate us. And, and I saw that a lot of the, the main, uh, the big designer brands, they weren't doing that, you know? And when we talk about just the, the imagery and messaging of and, and perceptions of African-American men in our society, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to change that narrative. And I wanted to use the platform of fragrance to do it, which is my passion. And and so that, that started the idea. And I've been working on this project now for about, uh, this is my fifth, sixth year working on the project, my third year of having a physical product to the market. But it took about three years of research, three years of uh, knocking on doors and a lot of rejection before I got a product to market. So that's, that's where I'm at. I'm originally from Detroit, Midwest. What's up, Midwest? I'm from the Midwest originally. Um, let's see, I uh, went to undergrad, went to Cornell University. Um, I also have an MBA and a JD from the University of Tennessee. So I thought I was going to do a little law later. I was going to say, you was going a different path, weren't you? You know, I, I thought I was, but law just wasn't, you know, I, most lawyers that I met weren't happy. And I, that's not my personal. I was like, I, man, I don't think I can spend the rest of my life dealing with the problems that lawyers deal with. So, uh, so I, I utilized my, my law degree in, um, in an entrepreneurial capacity. And so that's, that's what I'm doing. I love it. So let's take it on back because most of us don't, always have the same path of how we got to where we are today, right? right? So how did you, tell me about growing up. What did that look like for you? Because some folks are like, yeah, I you know, grew up, my parents were entrepreneurs, my great, great grandparents were entrepreneurs, but that's not everybody's story. Where did this start? No. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is not my story. Um, you know, I um, grew up in suburban Detroit, a small town called Inkster, Inkster, Michigan. And, um, and my mom, uh, I'm one of four children, I'm the oldest. Uh, my mom had me when she was 16, and uh, my my four siblings. You know, we we grew up in public housing um, in Inkster, and um, you know, and 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 so, you know, my dad was, you know, what he he was an entrepreneur. He was a street entrepreneur, and uh, and so, you know, I tell folks all the time. I say, hey, yeah, my dad was a pharmacist. He just didn't have an office. <laughs> you know, he he had it on the street, but you know, it was from just that environment that really kept me dreaming kept me wanting to, you know, aspire to do more and do better. And uh, entrepreneurism, it, it's always been a, a viable outlet, you know, and then, you know, being coming up when hip hop was coming up, you know, hip hop was born in our generation. So, you know, to see the success that the culture provided, hip hop culture provided for us also kind of helped fuel that flame of entrepreneurism. And you see people like Russell Simmons and 
the late great Andre Harrell and Diddy, Jay, uh, Jay Z. You know, it, it, it just you say, man, maybe I, there's a way out of these streets. And, um, and once I got my education, worked in corporate America for a while. Um, when you talk about the BS, you know that BS in corporate America for an aggressive, free thinking, creative person, period, and a black man in particular, you know, sometimes it's not the fr most friendly environment. And, um, and so for me, I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always wanted to apply my, my legal training, my business training, my experience in something that I love. And fragrance just happened to, you know, it, 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 it made sense to me, especially when there wasn't a brand that dedicated the messaging, the narrative to me, you know, dedicated to me. And I knew that I was going to make an impact. Um, so so how area. do you go from transitioning to, <laughs> I want to be a lawyer so I want to have a cologne. And I know that <laughs> the messaging is important, but that there's a, that's a specific transition, especially when you're yes. not talking about, yeah, I went to the city college, you know, around the corner and I paid $25 a year in order to go. <laughs> I invested right. a lot of money right. into this legal uh, life that you was planning on living. So what, what triggered that? Something triggered yeah. it. No, you know, I, um, when I was in law school, I interned with uh, a couple of law firms. I, I interned after my my first year in law school. I interned after my second year in law school. And like I said, it, it, you know, I thought going into it, you know, I took the LSAT, I studied, I applied, you know, and I thought that law would be something that I would really like. And once I got into it, I just, it wasn't, it didn't fit my personality. I mean, you know, I was speaking to one partner and uh, he was telling me, I said, man, you know, I, I want to be a partner one day. And he said, hey, you know, be careful what you ask for because, you know, the road to becoming a partner is a, is a pie eating contest. And he said, you know what your prize is? You know what your prize is once you, you know, he said your prize once you win the contest is more pie. And he said, that's what it is. It's more pie. And so I was like, you know what? I get it. You know, I, 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 and, I and I had gone to law school as an older student. So I, I had already experienced 10 years in the hospitality industry. Um, you know, I, let me talk about that a little bit too, but I, I was in the hospitality industry before law school. And so I was, I worked for Houston's restaurants, high Regency hotels. Um, I worked for a black owned, uh, TGI Fridays franchisee. Um, so I went to law school as an older student. And so for me, I, I had seen other avenues to, to make money and to be successful. And so, you know, as I, as I talked to lawyers about, you know, law, I was like, eh, I'll, I'll apply my legal training back in hospitality, you know, back in the entrepreneurial space. And that's what I did. And eventually when I got out of law school, I worked, I was HR director for the largest minority owned TGI Fridays franchisee, uh, helped grow the company from 10 restaurants to 40 restaurants, wow. over some multiple acquisitions and new store openings and things like that. And then I left my job as HR director to start my entrepreneurial venture. And, uh, and so, uh, so what was the, what for you? So like on, on this journey, because again, they're, they're two different worlds, right? right? What triggered the, the thought of the way that I'm going to get the message out is through fragrance. Um, you know, I'll tell you, it's, it's the emotion and importance that I gave fragrance. And I knew other people like that also gave fragrance, you know, high regard in just their style, their wardrobe, their just, you know, and how they define themselves. You know, we all like to smell good. And, you know, guys will talk about how they got their Versace, they got their Isimiyaki, they got this, they got that, their Gucci, just as much as they talk about their BMW, their Mercedes, their house in Alpharetta, you know, all those things. And, and what I recognized was is that there wasn't a voice, because again, I was a fragrance guy, there wasn't a voice um, in that space. And I knew, because there were guys like me who, again, high regard for fragrance, like to talk about it, like to, you know, um, let it be a, a defining piece of their personality. I was like, you know what? There needs to be a, a voice there, you know, in that space. And um, and I did my research. It was all about research. When I, I had the idea and then I did the research. And like I said, when I did the research, there wasn't a brand that spoke to me. There wasn't a brand that presented itself that looked like me. There wasn't a brand that presented itself that looked like my dad, my uncle, my cousins, nobody. And I said, I know that there's an opportunity because I talk to those people when they buy their fragrance. I talk to them. I know what, you know, I know what those guys look like. And I and the hunch for me was if a brand presented itself to those individuals, 
I think that those individuals would feel more inclined and to buy that particular brand versus a Gucci, a Prada, Yves Saint Laurent, Ralph Lauren. And the thing that, you know, it was hard to, to visualize because it had, it, it had never been done before. It was hard to kind of explain it because no one had ever seen it. And that's when I knew there was an opportunity. The fact that it had never been done before, that was the opportunity. Got it. Okay. So now we're on this path. We figured out we want to have the messaging that goes along with it. I think one of the key words you said was research because many of us are like, I want to start a business. Cool. I'm just going to start. But they don't take the time to genuinely do the research. Yeah. What was the research journey like for you? Oh man, it was, it was tough. Um, it was a lot of cold calling. Um, you know, I tell this story all the time, you know, I, uh, I would just do my Google research and I would find, you know, fragrance manufacturers and, you know, I would call them, call the salesperson, the account executive, whatever. And I would say, Hey, I have this idea. I want to create a, a, a fragrance brand dedicated to, you know, to, to the urban market. Here's the concept. You know, I submit, I would submit a proposal, things like that. And, and they would get back with me and say, Hey, you know, Unfortunately, you know, you're a little too small. We don't, you know, that's not what we do. Hey, go, why don't you just go call so-and-so? And then I would call so-and-so and so-and-so -so would give me the same, uh, you're too small, that's not what we do. Go call so-and-so. And I would call so-and-so and, and I would just be chasing my tail. And I did that for months at a time. And it finally got to the point where I, you know, I had to tell somebody, I was like, I've already called so-and-so. <laughs> I've, I've called them already. And so I was, I was, I was stuck. And I was able, really, the break for me was there was a young lady here in Atlanta. Um, her name was Susan Sexton. And she had a perfume studio in Buckhead. And her market, what she did is she created custom fragrances for wedding parties. Nothing big. It was just a party favor. But she was a fragrance connoisseur herself. And she had went to France and participated in a, in a program that allowed her to represent a particular uh, fragrance, essence, some oils, essence oils. And, and so she was able to get an inventory of oils and she opened up a boutique where she would help create custom fragrances for wedding parties. So I called her and I was like, hey, Susan, here's my idea. This is what I want to do. I know the fragrances that I like. I know the ingredients. I've done my research, but I don't know what patchouli smells like individually. I know it's in some of my fra favorite fragrances, but I need, I, I need to put my nose to patchouli. I need to put my nose to lavender. I need to put my, lo my nose to, you know, to, to bergamot. She was like, come on down to my studio. And I was, she opened her doors to me for about two months. And I was just come every weekend and start tinkering with these, you know, with different notes and, and building a prototype recipe. And I finally got a prototype recipe something that I liked. And um, she said, hey, she said, hey, Sean, this is as far as I can take you. I, I can't mass produce this. You're going to have to figure out a way to get this mass produced. And in that process of finding someone to get it mass produced took me to so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. Again, that was a six to eight month process. Hmm. Um, but and, and another big break came when I connected with a young man uh, out of New York. His name is Bart Smith. And he's a fragrance consultant. He's a fragrance agent. And um, I spoke to him and I said, hey, Bart, you know, here's my dream. Here's my vision. I want to create a fragrance. And Bart is the he's an executive. I um, uh, used to work for a major fragrance manufacturer and he was a vice president of, of uh, marketing. Um, so he was quite familiar with the, the process. Um, that was his business to help guys like me bring products to market. And so I reached out to him. I said, hey, you know, will you work with me? And uh, he took a risk. And that was five years ago. And I, and I was nowhere close to where I am now. And, I, and he was like, hey, I'll, I'll offer whatever I can. And, um, and I appreciate Bart tremendously because that was the mentorship in the industry that I needed. You know, I could call him. I could email him. And uh, he was always open to, to provide information. So he turned me on to uh, some folks in his network. And we were able to get the fragrance manufactured, um, find a bottling company, find a packaging company. Um, and I saved my money working, you know, as much, you know, I was doing all types of things, you know, I cashed in my 401k from my previous job. I was, I was doing just a lot of stuff to just bootstrap it. I had a few friends that believed in me and invested and, uh, we leveraged that to, to purchase inventory. And then it became a flip the inventory, flip the inventory, flip the inventory, grow the inventory, grow the brand. And now we're at a point now we have the largest amount of inventory we've ever had. 
Uh, we got a great Father's Day promo campaign going on right now. So, you know, we're, we're making progress. But it was a, it was a, it was a three-year process to get physical product. And now I've been, again, doing it now for about three years and just grassroots. It's just been a grassroots campaign. Why do you think, first of all, I applaud you because creating a product is not easy. I've helped other clients, so I know what that journey looks like. But why do you think people are so, they think that this is an easy process? Because for, for somebody that doesn't know, they're like, oh, credit card, I can do that. That's easy. You just want to create, you just put the smells together. Why, why do we think like that? Yeah, I, you know, I think we just we're a little naive to what really happens on the back end. Um, and then a lot of us aren't, um, you know, we, we just we don't do the due diligence. Once you start doing the due diligence and the research, you realize that none of this is overnight. And I applaud all of my fellow entrepreneurs that create products. Um, it's more to it. You know, there's so much that goes into it. I'm not a chemist. I'm not a perfumer. You know, you have to find people with the skill set to bring your product to life. And I think a lot of people, because we easily consume things, we think it's easily to produce things. And, 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 I, right there. And, and I just, I know, I, I mean, I was that consumer. And because we are so free in consumption, we take for granted and neglect the, the, the just what it takes to produce. And, and, and that's been the biggest transition that I have had to make is that my mentality has transitioned from being a consumer to a producer. And that, those are two different mentalities, um, you know. And, and so once you really appreciate and, and do the due diligence, you'll understand the toils that it takes to bring a product to market. And, and, and I use that story because a lot of people say, oh, you know, I love supporting, uh, our, you know, supporting black business or I love supporting us. But, you know, we just got to do better. We got to do better with this. We got uh, and, I t and I I cut people off right. At the, cut them off at the knees. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Let's understand something. The, the things that this person did to get this product to even introduce it to you. You got to understand that they they sacrificed and did so, so much. And so your critique is always welcome. And I tell people that with my fragrance, like I, I openly want it. I, I accept it, but be, you know, be, be, be understanding of, you know, the effort and the things that it took to get here as you, you know, as you, as you, you form your critique, because you're right. It's not perfect. There are, I can improve the packaging. I can improve the bottle. I can improve. Yes. But all of that takes capital. It takes time. It takes additional expertise. Um, and you have to understand that the people that provide that extra level of quality, that extra level of whatever, the doors aren't wide open for us. There's extra hurdles that we have to jump to even position ourselves for that A1 packaging, that A1 bottle, that A1 ingredient. That A, you know, And so we have to, we got to do what we got to do to get the product to the market. And what I need from, you know, is to, Offer that support, offer that encouragement, offer that critique, offer that connection in your network that you think can help. That's what I need. That's what I need. Don't tell me, man, your fragrance only lasts about five minutes. It lasts much longer than five minutes, but in my journey, I have heard that. And you know what? At the time in my journey, when it was lasting five minutes, you're right. I need to, I got to upgrade. I got to do better, you know? So, I, I, you know, my thing is, is that we have to, actively support one another and, and, you know, and understand the journey and understand the process. So, because I, I think we, oh man, that's so bars. Like we do consume really quickly, right? Yep. We don't even think about what it takes for anything, whether it's food, whether it's products, whether it's whatever it is, we consume it so fast. We expect that, oh, this is how, what this journey looks like. So we want this popcorn microwave type of business to be able to come out of you saying five years in order to develop it and to get to where it is today, right. that is amazing, especially when it comes to having products. Another thing that you said that I think is important is that the level of support that you had from people that were around you. How important is it to have a dope surrounding? My friends and I, we call it our friend portfolio, where right. you can call somebody and say, I have a dream. Don't you want to support it? What right. is, how, how important is it for you to have a dope friend portfolio? Yeah, you, it is very important. Um, you know, I had to take inventory when I started, when I decided to take, to dive into this full time and really make it my passion, I had to take an inventory. 
I had to take an inventory of my kind of my friend portfolio and, and or my friends and say, okay, who's who who are the people that I can bring this to and I know will support me? And then who are the people that I know if I bring this to, uh, then you know, they may be a little lukewarm to cold. And I realized just to help my mental and help my psyche during the process, you have to surround yourself with people who have a natural inclination to support you, encourage you, cheerlead for you. Um, and, and, and it's not all about money. It does not have to be about money. Money is a key element, um, but your friends, your network, people that support you offer so much more that sometimes it, you, you can't even put a price tag on. There have been times where I wanted to quit. There, and, and I have a few friends that keep going, Sean. You got to keep going. We need this product. And that, that, that was priceless. It was priceless in the process because that's what kept me going. And, and here's the thing, what I realized too, is that the people that could least afford to invest in me, they were the ones that invested the most. Let me tell you, you that I, when I tell you that they don't, they're the ones that aren't just out here talking. They're the ones that genuinely care and believe. They may not have the funds to do it, right? Yep. But they are supportive. Yep. The ones that could afford it the least invested the most. And I'm not just saying money. It's time. It's encouragement. It's, bro, you look tired. Let me get you something to eat. You know, bro, come on over, you know, whatever. And I was like, you don't have to do that. And I'm going to tell you what, what, it, what the conversation I had with someone. I was like, because I asked, I was like, man, you got kids, you're trying to pay for college. Why are you investing in me? Why, why? He says, brother, you are doing something to provide hope and encouragement and aspiration for us. People are, and there's a lot of folks out here that are not doing that. And so because of that alone, you know, I'm investing. I'm, I'm putting my time and energy in you because you're doing something that a lot of people don't do, that can afford to do it, don't do. And so that was, again, as a part of my friend, portfolio to hear that encouragement kept me going it, 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 it kept me going and again it was at a time where I was gonna quit I was like there's no way I can do this it's too it's too massive of an of a, of a, of a endeavor you know I can't do this but um, so you know it, it's important you got to have friends that support you and it's not all about money it's not yeah. it's also like you said it's good to acknowledge that support doesn't always come in money it doesn't always come as somebody writing you a check Sometimes it's literally the, you didn't eat today. One of my, one of my friends, Veronica, she looked, yesterday I had so many things to do. She was like, hey, I'm gonna go get your daughter and we're gonna go garden. They went, they did gardening, they made dinner, they had a wash car, they had a whole entire great day. So it wasn't that, hey, I, I wanna support what you have going on financially, but it was just spending that quality time with, with, with my girl. So yep. I 100% agree with making sure that, that the people that are around you that are supporting you, even if it's not financially, whatever part that they can play, make sure that they're playing those parts. Let me ask you this. When you evaluated the people that are around you, what it, what happened with the ones that they sucked? <laughs> um, you know what? You know, I just, you know, you just kind of, you don't bring your, you learn not to bring your dreams and ideas and even your progress to them. Like, you know, hey, I quickly realized, like me sharing with you or explaining with you my progress, doesn't matter. You're not, you don't care. You know, you really don't care. And I wasn't going to waste my time trying to impress or gain the validity and, and approval of people that just don't care. It's a waste of time. You're better off just just speak to your speak to your fan base, speak to your audience, speak to the people that are cheering you on, and and, and exchange energy with them. Exchanging energy with someone who doesn't have energy for you is a waste of your time. And mm -hmm. you just have to have, you just have to be courageous enough to realize it and act on it. And be like, you know what? Hey, it's cool. And, and, and again, I don't hold it against anyone. People have so many things going on in their lives. You know, I, hey, it's okay. It's okay. You know, um, I'll just loop back around with you at, a, at, a, at another time, at a later date. But I just stop wasting my time. You know, it's, it's and it reminds me, too, I, and I know you talk about this a lot, about just the whole capital raising process, the venture capital process. And man, I have, you know, I stopped chasing people to raise money. I, I realize now the amount of time that I was doing chasing people, and, and it may be just me. I'm, I, I, I have a short, 
patience, you know, my patience is not very long. So when it comes to raising capital for my dream, I would rather apply my time back into my dream, figuring out a plan and just bootstrap it, flip it, flip the money, flip the money, flip the money, than have these unproductive meetings with people saying, I'm going to invest, I'm going to invest. Hey, let me, t let me, intro man, man, listen, by the time we have the meeting and you make a decision, I've already, I've, I'm, I'm a half a mile up the road already, you know? And so, and I get it. I'm not saying, this is just my story. For me and who I am, I look myself in the mirror and try to figure out what do I need to do versus this, 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 this investment uh, uh, brochure and all this other stuff. Waste of time, waste of money. You know, I've, I've gifted so many bottles to people. Gifted bottles. Hey, man, check, check me out. This is what I'm doing. No response, no nothing. And I just, I don't waste time with that anymore. Not at all. So the investment of your time, and, and I, I absolutely love, love the way that you worded that because we do invest a lot of time in, in trying to make things right and asking people for help. And sometimes you just got to get to it. You have to invest your own time. Everybody's not going to believe in your in your vision, in your dream. Everybody's not going to care about cologne. They're not going to all care about systems. And and to understand that that's okay. Yep. It's, it's okay. It may not be your journey. It may not be a part of your path, but there's still a way that you can support. And if you're not going to support, I'm going to need you to move about the way. Basically, because let me tell you, and I'm going to say this. Let me tell you something. I have a slogan. I say, you got two choices. You're going to get behind me or you're going to, you're going to get behind me with your support or you're going to get behind me with all that bullshit. So that's it. You got two choices. You're going to get behind me or you're going to get the behind me. Those are the two choices. And that's, that's just my attitude about it. Like you're going to get, yeah. behind me, you know, get behind me with your support or get behind me with all that bullshit. That's it. Those yeah. are the two choices. Nothing. I mean, it's that simple. And, and because I operate in that space, I am highly motivated and highly, highly, um, you know, just driven. Because what I have realized is a lot of people come with a lot of BS, you know, and, and, and so I don't, you know, I don't have time for it. I just don't. And I, I have no patience for it. Don't get me wrong. If you want to support, I'm here. Let's talk. I'll tell you what I need. But if at any point you don't deliver, you, you, you're taking years and months and years, guess what? It's this right here. Get behind me, bro. You got two options. You can get behind me with your support, or you can get the behind me with all that bullshit. That's it. What? Yes, you might have run it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling all my fellow entrepreneurs, you have to adopt that. That it is what it is. That's that killer instinct. Y'all just finished watching Last Dance. Everybody talking about Michael Jordan. Last Dance. The attitude. You watched it. Now apply it in your what you're doing. Apply it. Be a dog. Get out here and be a dog. Let them know. Get inspired by whatever inspires you. Somebody doubted you, turn into Michael Jordan and show them what doubt does, what it does to you. And that's how I feel right now. I'm like, that's fine. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you. Ooh, he told y'all today. Y'all better stop. And, I mean, and, and, I, and that's right. And it's, it's really that simple. It is that simple. I love, and especially when you understand the type of impact that you're trying to create in your community. When you already know the purpose that's behind what you're doing, you don't have time for all the BS. You really don't. Like, you're trying to make an impact. So let's talk about how you came to the name Ovation. Yes. Um, you know, I really wanted to create a brand that celebrated us, you know, and was really authentic to, or, or that encapsulated that notion of celebration of us and see you got to remember you know even to right now in the middle of the pandemic there are so many black men have a target we just had to deal with ahmad being shot down in in brunswick georgia we just had a, an announcement today of a police officer with, a, with his knee in the in the guy's neck in minnesota like this is constant this is constant we just had a woman in central park wants to call a car, you know, on calling the police on a, on a guy threatening, you know, saying that he's threatening her and her dog when he was just questioning her about the dog being on a leash. 
these are the images, these are the themes that are happening right now that I wanted to address through my passion of fragrance. And so for me, you, it, I, I tell people all day, don't, with everything that's going on in society right now, don't question me about my fragrance celebrating the lives of black men. Don't question me. Don't question me. That's my passion. This is, this is my platform. I created it. This is the name. And it is what it is. And, 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 but my thing is, I'm not, I'm not promoting it to hit anybody over the head with it. What I'm saying is, given what's going on in today's society, ovation is needed. Ovation, the ovation is needed. We have to represent ourselves to counter all of the negative things that are going on in our society about us. And I, I, I was just tired of reading about it. I was tired of talking about it. I wanted to do something. I, I'm a creative at heart. So I wanted to have a platform where I can tangibly address those things. And Ovation is a part of that. So I know you've gotten slack about it because anytime you're pro something, it means that you hate the other side, right? So right. What, has that, what has that other side looked like for you? Because again, you're celebrating black men. Have you gotten slack about, does that mean you're not celebrating black women? Does that mean you're not celebrating white people? White folks can't wear your cologne? What you trying to say? You racist? That, what does that right. look like? Yeah, no, I, you know, and I tell people this. I'm like, listen, that's, that, I'm far from that. I'm not. Uh, but this is just, you know, me being, and you've heard this before, you know, me being pro-black doesn't mean I'm anti white or, or, you know, that, that's not what it means. What it means is on these occasions where I want to make special recognition to a, a specific demographic that has historically been hunted, killed, uh, lynched, uh, you know, um, all, all these things, there needs, there, there needs to be more messaging counter to that to show the dignity, the respect, the honor um, that we truly are. And so I wanted my fragrance to represent that. And I, I, you know, listen, if Beyonce can be unapologetically black at Coachella, and, 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 and then I can be unapologetically black with my platform that I created. And it's just that simple, I, I, you know? And again, it's not to exclude anyone else, but, but I say this, if you rock with me, you know what I'm talking about. And if you down with it, great, you know? This is about a celebration of us, you know, and I don't see anything wrong with that. I love that because we need, especially when it comes to black men, we need that type of support. I know you guys need that. So having an ovation, when I say that I appreciate when I first saw it, I was like, yes, this is what I'm talking about. So, right. so let, let's talk a little bit about the journey of, of developing that brand because everybody wants to have a product at some point. We love having businesses, but developing the brand and the messaging behind it, how did you work through that? Yeah, you know, and again, it took some studying and research because what I did, you know, I would I, I researched all of the brand marketing or the, the, yeah, the brand marketing for a lot of the major designers. You know, I, I would go look at the Christmas campaign for Polo. I would go look at the Father's Day campaign for Yves Saint Laurent, for Tom Ford. And, and, and I laid them all out, you know, all the imagery, all the messaging. And I, and I tried to identify what was missing, at least from my lens, you know, what was missing. And in that process, you also, I also was able to identify a theme of how most fragrances are branded. You know, you'll, you'll see the same thing. It's some guy with his, in a Speedo, in a six pack, with his hair slicked back, you know, in some scene of grandeur you know, in some scene of grandeur with a bottle in the corner, the picture of the bottle in, in the corner of the advertisement. And my thing was, it just, that imagery, as, as grand as it is, it still didn't represent me. It didn't represent, like I said, my uncle, my, my you know, my brother. It, it just didn't represent me. Where's the fragrance that's celebrating the entrepreneur that's just closed on his first big deal, you know, million dollar deal? Where's the fragrance that celebrates the guy that just graduated from college. Where's the fragrance that celebrates, you know, uh, this 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 newly married man to this beautiful queen? Where's that fragrance that celebrates that? And so that was what I wanted to address. You know, I wanted to address those images. Where's the fragrance that 
celebrates that that single dad that's raising his kids. You know, um, that's what I wanted to address. So when you when you notice most of my branding and 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 the imagery, it's not so much about the bottle, but it's more it's more about uh, presenting imagery that speaks again to our style, our creativity, our dignity, our respect, you know, our manhood. And that's what I want. I, that's what my brand focus is. How do we produce messages that speak to our manhood? And, and the thing is, when I want people, when they see the messaging, to say, hey, that has inspired me. Well, one, they say, I see myself in that image. Mm. And that's, that's, you know, and if they don't see themselves, the response I want people to say or to have is, I aspire to see myself as that image. And I can't say that Tom Ford does that. I can't say that Eve St. Laurent does that. I can't say that Ralph Lauren does that. Not for me and the people that I think, uh, you know, that, 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 that look like me, talk like me, feel like me. I, I just don't think that they're hitting it. They're not, they're, those brands aren't hitting it, hitting the target. And so I wanted to create something different. So that messaging, I think that's super important because we don't, when you're in the entrepreneur space and you get to see kind of behind the veil and you're like, oh, that's why they're using that in these pictures. Oh, that's why they're using these colors. Once you're behind that veil and you kind of understand what it means, but most people don't know how they're being specifically marketed to, right? You don't realize that the one, the man, like you said, that's in the Speedo, we're looking at that saying, oh, I wish that I was there with him or I wish I got to experience that. So that messaging is super important, right? So when it came to you developing the messaging, you set out all these other competitors, you figured out where the void was, and you said, I want to fill it with something that reminds me of home, that reminds me of me, that reminds me of my family. Where did you find the content? Because it doesn't just exist. There's not just, I mean, there's, there's more, you know, black pictures of black families and all of these scenes, but tell me how you actually created what the messaging would be for your company? Because it didn't already exist. No, it didn't. Yeah, um, that's a very good question. Very good question. You know, and see, you know, as you know, you know, branding is kind of half art and half science, you know. And what I wanted to lean in on was kind of the art of it, you know, the feeling of it. And it really started, and I'll be honest, you know, I just looked at people in my network, guys that, and women, that I thought represented the brand and represented at least the message that I wanted to present. And so it kind of started there first. Like, who are the people who let me tangibly identify the people. And if I could have gotten permission for Barack Obama to be on my, my campaign, I would have, because it was people like him, you know, but you know, outside of Barack Obama, there are individuals in my network that I was like, you know what, this brother's about his business. This brother dresses well, he's respect, respectable. You know, he, he's positive. He's, you know, I want to include him in my campaign. You know, there's a, you know, there are just people that I wanted to assemble um, to be a part of the campaign that represented the image that I wanted to project for my brand. And it, so it started there. And then the next piece of it was, well, even before that was the slogan. I had to come up with a slogan for the brand. And so the, the slogan is every man deserves an ovation. Mm -hmm. So that slogan kind of is, the, is the, the springboard for everything. You know, it's like when I say every man, I mean every man. And that's every man. Um, and I wanted to capture images that represent that. And, and you and I know every man, there's firemen, police officers, teachers, lawyers, doctors, you know, uh, construction workers, you know, my the creative challenge for us is to determine where life and fragrance intersect. And then what I want to do is, you know, where two points, where two lines intersect is a point. And so what our creative team, myself, shout out to my partners, DJ Fidel, Cecil Cross. Um, what we want to do is take that intersection and, and extract it and then blow it up into whatever creative ideas we can. When life intersects with fragrance, let's, let's, let's take that point and extract it and then look at it and examine it and say, okay, what's the message? What message? And, and so for us, you know, that line of life and that line of fragrance has a very specific definition. Yes, it's a life that we as African-American men, you know, that's the lens that I'm, that I'm you know, using for that, for that line. 
and then fragrance, you know, fragrance is, 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 is artistic. It's the beauty and artistry of fragrance, you know, and the, and the feeling and emotion that fragrance provides. So that's kind of the framework of how we de determine the messaging. And there are many touch points of fragrance in life, you know. Um, it's, it's that memory of you possibly when you hug your, your dad, your uncle, your brother, you know, and the, and, and the emotion that it evoked. Okay, how can I capture that moment and create a story around it? Maybe it's that emotion where, you know, a single dad is, is waving off to his, his daughter first day, um, you know, to school or she's catching the bus for the very first time and she's a little apprehensive and she runs back to the porch to hug him. And part of the, the, the pleasure of hugging him is the way he smells and he soothes her as she goes on to the bus for her first day of, of, of school riding the bus alone. Like that moment, that's a real life moment. How, do, how does my team capture that and create visuals and messaging that explains that moment that is quite compelling to us, you know? And that's basically, that's how I approach it. Where does life and fragrance intersect? Let's extract that point. And let's build a story around that point. And that's it. That is, that is awesome. Because even while you're saying that I have fragrances in my head like I, my whole high school is cool water right and uh, th that's the fragrance that goes along because that's just what was popular back then my dad was jupe right uh, jupe was awesome back in the day but uh, but th those thoughts they do evoke emotions they do evoke memories and that's why i think the fact that you've done an excellent job with making sure that those messages are able to evoke those feelings like they have to go hand in hand Absolutely. And that's the beauty about fragrance. Like fragrance is all about, it's a sensory. And so that's what I love about it. That's what, you know, we, you know, we at, at Team Ovation, that's what we talk about. All, how do we create those sensory moments, you know, and uh, with, the, with the branding and the messaging. And it's important, you know, it's, it's very important. So, I, and I think, you know, as we get better at it, you know, we're going to really uh, own the space, you know, we're going to own that piece of it. You know, I can't say, and don't, don't get me wrong, my competitors, and when I say competitors, the big boys, the Ralph Lorenz, Tom Ford, uh, you know, they do a decent job of evoking emotion. But I think it's so it's so um, mass produced now. They don't really dive deep into just creating emotions with their branding and their messaging and their marketing. And that's what we want to do. I absolutely, absolutely love it. So now you said another key word that's here is called team. How did you come up with your team? Mm -hmm. because people think that they could just do everything by themselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and again, my team is even broader than just, you know, I mentioned Cecil Cross and, and DJ Fidel, uh, but there are others behind the scenes that have invested early in. Um, I saw my man, Mario Schaff. What's up, Mario? I saw you in the comments, man. Mario has been a big supporter. Appreciate him tremendously. Um, you know, I have a college buddy that invested in the, in the, in the brand. Without him, would not have been able to happen. Um, I mean, it, it, it goes on and on. My man Mel, what's up, Mel? You know, supporting. So when it comes to building a team, you know, it's more to it than, than you know, you got you to gotta really pay attention to it because every aspect of your business requires certain um, skill sets, you know. And so building a team, you just kind of have to sit down and understand where you're trying to go, what skill set is going to help you get there. And then you build a team, you know, you know, you build a team around it. People that, you know, are passionate about fragrance possibly, or, or passionate about the messaging and the, 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 the goal of the brand. And then you, you invite them to be a part of the team and whatever they can offer. Hey, you, you offer it and, and accept it. And, and let's put a plan together to execute. Uh, but you can't do it by yourself as much as you may want to. You, you can't. And I've, I, I quickly realized that. So I, I don't try to go through this journey by myself. Got it. So if you can give advice to someone that is looking to create a product, no matter what it is, what are some tangible things that you could tell them if they were like, man, I see what you did. You grinded all this time. We love you. Finally got, give us some advice for someone that wants to create a product. Um, do your research, do your research. That is the number one thing. What, where we always fail is we don't educate ourselves about the process. We don't educate ourselves about the industry. 
Um, we don't educate ourselves about the process. Um, so do your research, okay? That's the first thing. Understand the challenge. And, and when I say research, that's exactly what, you have to first understand the challenge, okay? That's the first thing. So understand the challenge, do your research. Second is um, understand that it is you and only you that's gonna get that dream off the ground. You can run around all day long talking about so and so ain't help me and I need help and why you you can spend you wasting time you wasting time get started get started you get started and block out everyone else you get started okay and then um, don't underestimate the capital you're gonna need capital no all drink here this is what I learned in law school <laughs> or when I was getting my MBA, all dreams must be financed. All dreams must be financed. Can somebody put that in the comments? All dreams must be financed. Put that in the all, comments. All dreams must be financed. Okay? So as an entrepreneur, you are a dreamer. And as an entrepreneur, by default, your dreams have to be financed. Now, we can, we can go back and forth on what's the best way to finance your dreams. You know, you have people on here talking about credit. You have people on here talking about SBA. You have people on here talking about bootstrap. You, all of those things can get your dream off the ground. You, got, you have to decide what's best for you and where you best equipped. You know, like I said, I have a short patience. I, I just don't have patience for waiting on the SBA to get back with me and chasing investors. And they say, nah, you know, my, you know I'll, I'll figure it out. If I got to drive Uber, if I got to keep my job, if I got to uh, uh, go on eBay and sell some stuff, whatever I got to do, I'm going to do. And that's what I did, you know. So definitely financing, understand financing. And then um, the last piece of it, do not lose confidence. Do not lose confidence in your dream. You, you cannot give up. Do not give up. That's it. Mm, those are such good bars. Especially, I love that all dreams must be financed. Because I, I think when people come up with dreams, and even if it's a God-given dream, God bless you, to have a dream that God gave you, it's still going to require some type of investment in order to get it off the ground. Not just from an investor. Sometimes right. that investor is you. Yeah, and, and, and exactly. And, you know, and like I said, it'll put a strain on your relationship. Sometimes that investment is going to your partner and saying, baby, you know, we're not going on that vacation this, 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 this summer. Hey, baby, you know that new car? We can't get that new car. Hey, you know, that, 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 you know I normally give me a custom suit every month. Ah, I can't get that custom suit. That's, that's financing. That's financing. So that's what it looks like, too. And I think, you know, for entrepreneurs, you know, it can be a tough situation. It can be, you know, it can be tough. But you got to have those real life conversations because all your resources have to be laser focused on your dream. And it starts with you before anybody else can believe in it. You got to believe in it. Like I said, I've been working on this now for five, six years. And the people that know me when I first started this, they'll tell you, Sean, you, you have the same enthusiasm. You have the same focus. You're executing. You're getting things done. It's a step by step process. And that's what I look for sometimes, too, when I look at potential partners or you know, if I see you out in the street hustling with me and I see you making progress, I make special note. I say, hmm, note to self. I need to pay attention to that person because they out here grinding. I see them. We're at the same places doing the same thing. So they're, if I believe I'm going to make it, then by default, I got to believe that they're going to make it. Hmm, if they're going to make it, this is somebody I need to collaborate with. And that's, that's I keep my eye open all the time. And people yeah. always want to know, people always want to know, <clears throat> how can I collaborate with you? I tell people this all the time. I was like, listen, you got two options. You can get out here in the streets and show me that you are serious about whatever you're doing. That's, that's the main one. And then, you know, do more than just, you know, or support my, support my mission, support my, you know, support my journey. And like I said, it don't have to, it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't, you don't even have to buy a bottle. Like, I, I mean, a buying a bottle might be an entry, but show me that you hustling about your dream or show me that you really support mine. Now we can do we we can collaborate all day long every day. Come on with the collaboration because that that again, like you said, that support comes in many different ways. It doesn't just have to come, but you do have to put in on this. 
Right. You can't be in the section and, and you, you, you ain't put in nothing on this father. Right. I'm plugged in my phone. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. So one more thing. Um, the relationship part is important. Collaboration, investing in your own business, knowing they can get with you or get behind you. All of these things are amazing. Tell me what wakes you up in the middle of the night where you're like, oh, I have to get this done. What What is that piece that wakes you up in the middle of the night that's still left? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Wow. You know, I'll be honest. I actually sleep at night now. Now that, I've, you know, the dream is off the ground, I, I sleep. But the, the moments when I am not sleeping and I have, to, I have to get up at night, it's about ideas to expand the brand. Um, the last time I got up in the middle of the night, I had this epiphany. I said, you know what? I am not you know, the company is not a fragrance development company. That's not what we are. That's not what I am. I had this epiphany to say, I'm a fragrance content development company. That's a difference because it made me kind of shift my thinking. It's about the content. In the middle of a pandemic, I'm like, man, I cannot get my fragrance to enough noses for people to smell. So how am I going to survive in this pandemic? The answer is content. You can get your content out to many people, but you can't get, you know, and so that was the epiphany. I was like, wow, I'm a con, I'm a fragrance content development company. In addition to having a great fragrance, having a physical fragrant, fragrance product. That's, you know, and so I jumped out of bed and I just started brainstorming on, you know, fragrance content development company. How do I, how do I create content around fragrance? that resonates with my customer. That's the mission. Along with a great product that once they see the content and they smell it, it matches. Wow, the content is great, the fragrance is great. Bam, okay, I get it. So that's the new mission. I tell my, my vision board for 2020, it ain't ruined. My vision board for 2020 is actually in process right now. Content, content, fragrance content development company. That's what I am. I can't say that Ralph Lauren says that. I can't say that Tom Ford is saying that. I'm saying it. That's how we're gonna. That's how we're gonna win. We're a fragrance content development company with a great fragrance. I love that. That now that is how you pivot because when you look at these industries that are affected most by by uh, COVID. It's ones that require people. It requires people to be in front. And fragrance is one of the top ones. You yep. can people want to smell things. Think about how crazy TJ Maxx is. It's just yeah. a thousand women walking around trying to smell candles. That's all we are. Yep. Right? <laughs> so, so if we can't go in, how do we can't go into TJ Maxx and smell candles? How are we going to survive? Right. So right. It's something that you have to smell. So making that pivot. Yep. Phenomenal. I love that. Yep. So that's what we're on, right? So I'm, I'm kind of rethinking kind of my business tactics, business strategies around fragrance content development. Um, that's the key. That's the key. And, it, and, just, and to be honest with you, yeah, just this epiphany came during the pandemic, you know, because I just, I was stuck. I was like, shoot, how am I going to get my fragrance out? And I can't get within six feet of people, you know? Well, I am very, very proud of the progress that you made and that you're not letting twenty you're not letting twenty twenty do what twenty twenty wanna do. We we still got our vision boards up, mine are still up along my wall. Absolutely. So I'm very and I, gracious yeah. that you're still rocking and rolling. So let's let the people know. How do we get in contact? What specials you have going on? What you got going on? Well, right now, uh, we're in the middle of Father's Day. So for everyone out there, please support the campaign. Please support the brand. Um Father's Day is is, is maybe three weeks away. Um, you know, go to ovationfragrance.com, ovationfragrance.com. Check out my website. Um, talks all about the brand and what we stand for. You can purchase a bottle. Um, bottle normally ships out either that day or the next day. It gets to anywhere across the country in three, maybe four days, two to, well, three to, two to, two to four days, depending on where you are. Um, you can hit me on IG. I respond to every message. I try to, you know, respond to every comment. Um, so you can, you know, hit me up, send me a message. I, you know, I'm all about let's build. Um, 
you know uh so that's it right now father's day is a big thing you know i love father's day because it's the only holiday of the year where you know men are the subject of all the gifting you know we're, that's it men are the subject of, of gifting so father's day is like christmas for us at team ovation so if we can't get if we can't succeed on father's day Oh, I'm gonna wrap this wrap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give on up. I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna give up. If we can't if we can't make something happen on Father's Day. I'm gonna give up. You right now, though, I'm 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 very optimistic that we're not gonna give up. Uh, things are looking really good. The pre-orders, the early orders for Father's Day, are, uh, you know, are looking really good. So I'm I'm anticipating the next week or so things are picking up. So awesome. So ovationfragrance.com, correct? <laughs> Yep. Instagram, you can hit me at Sean Crenshaw INC. That's Sean Crenshaw Inc. Um, also, um, Ovation for Men on Instagram. And uh, like I said, you know, we, I'm here. I'm here. You can call me, DM me. I'll respond. Perfect. Sean, I am so grateful for you and everything you're doing. I'm glad that somebody is celebrating Black men. It makes me happy as a black woman who loves black men. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for everything you've done. It's so great. So for those of you guys, again, that are looking to be able to get some ovation, because every man deserves an ovation. Every I man agree. deserves an ovation. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ovationfragrance.com. And if you need them, go on a slide in the DM. If you need me, slide in mine. Again, this okay. is another episode of Business and BS. Thanks. Today, the BS stood for kind of both of them, then it? Business strategies yeah. and that BS that goes along with business. Again, Chris, I, when I tell you Christmas came early when I got to have you on here because I believe in supporting black men. So again, I thank, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. And again, thank if you guys need us, thank feel free to slide in our DMs. And we love y'all. Thank you, Connie. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.